Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this video I will be showing you a project which controls a power to device. I will be showing you three principles. Pulse width modulation to control the power device such as a motor, use of an LCD display and how to connect a computer keyboard to the Arduino in order to type in a desired level of output. But first of all let's have a look at the finished project. So here is a project. I have a standard computer keyboard, a current meter and an LCD screen connected to the Arduino board. Here's what happens if I type in 50 for 50%. 50 So this type of project can be used to control the power to a device such as a filament light or a motor. Next I shall show you it controlling the speed of a fan. I've connected a 12 volt fan to the circuit with a small modification. It's running off its own power supply but the ground is still connected to the Arduino. The first thing to do is connect an LCD display. I am using a DEM16217SYH which happens to be compatible with a Hitachi HD44780 driver. All that means is that I can easily connect it up to the Arduino Uno and use a liquid crystal library that comes with the program. What helps me is to write the pin connections on a sticker and place it above the pins. I have soldered 4 of 8 data pins because I think it is unnecessary to use all 8 when it has a 4 bit mode. Here is the pin assignment. The RS connection is on pin 12, the enable connection labelled E is on pin 11, and the data pins 4 through 7 are connected to the Arduino pins 7 through 4. You can reverse this around if you wish with a modification to the program. The RW connection is connected to ground. This pin is for reading or writing data to the LCD, but as it is unlikely that you will be reading data from the LCD, you will always connect this to ground which saves a pin on the board. The V0 pin is the power supply to the display. Connect this to the wiper of a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. The other ends are connected to the 5 volt and ground connections. The VDD pin goes to 5 volts and the ground connection of course goes to ground. I shall explain more about the other pin assignments later. So hopefully you've got that wired up correctly. I'm using the standard liquid crystal library. So those two pins on the LCD are to ground. VDD to positive 5 volts. V0 to the potentiometer. Here are the pins that I am using. There are different constructors for the LCD. I'm using this one because I'm not using that many pins. Here I set up my 16x2 LCD and print a message. I set the cursor to the second line and this prints a number. I have taken this code from the examples here. If I go down to liquid crystal, there's the hello world program and I get this. So this is the program from which I have taken some of the code. So if all has gone well, you should be seeing this when you upload your program to the board. Now onto the keyboard. I am using a standard PC keyboard with a PS2 connector which I have cut off. Here it is from the side. 
There is a sticker underneath the keyboard which tells me that it uses 5 volts and takes 75 milliamps maximum which means that the board can power it as the board should be able to deliver a maximum of 200 milliamps. Here are the pins from the front. I used a multimeter on continuity test in order to determine which pins are connected to the different coloured wires. The wire without insulation is the outside sheath of the cable which I have chosen not to use in this project. You will not need the plug after you have determined the colours. I have written them down on a sticker and placed it underneath the keyboard. I stripped the wire of the cable and connected the 5 volt and ground wires to the board. The data pin has been connected to pin 2. The clock has to be connected to a pin which can be used for hardware interrupts. On an Arduino Uno board, pins 2 and 3 can be assigned for this purpose. I have downloaded the PS2 keyboard from the internet. A link will be placed underneath the video. I have decompressed the folder and placed it in the Libraries folder where my Arduino program is. If I go to Examples, PS2 Keyboard, Simple Test, this gives me this program. I have taken some of the code from it. So I've added these, those are my data and clock pins. I've added the keyboard object. Delay for one second and I start the keyboard. Here, this if statement checks whether there is data available. If so, the character is placed in the C variable. If I hit a delete key, it clears the LCD screen. Otherwise, it outputs that particular key onto the LCD screen. If everything is working, you should see some text which has been typed in from the keyboard. The next thing to do is connect the moving coil meter to the circuit. I have shown this in red. I have used symbols of a resistor and an inductor to show that this gives a back EMF. I have placed a diode and capacitor to suppress this problem so it will not produce a voltage spike on the pin. It is connected to pin 10. I need a load resistor for the moving coil meter. By doing a calculation, the load resistor comes to about 10 kilo ohms. I have used a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor connected to a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer with a wiper at full resistance. When the circuit is delivering the maximum power, I can lower the resistance until the needle goes up to 100%. I'm using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor with a potentiometer just in case I accidentally made a mistake and set it to 0 ohms, so at least I don't short the meter out. And now onto the source code. So I've added quite a bit of code to this. I have a pulse width modulation control pin. I have some variables, current output percent, characters type, zero, because at this point I haven't typed anything. And here I have an array of four characters, all initialized to zero. I prefer to have a blinking cursor, so that's what that command does. I set the control pin 10 to an output, update the display. So when I type a key it goes into the variable C. This switch statement has three cases. If I press a delete key, if I press enter, or if I type in a character. If I press delete it makes sure that there are characters to delete. So the position I want to start is column 11, minus 1. So that's why I have a 10 there. And I put a space there to delete it. I take 1 off the characters typed, and I put a 0 in the array. I set the cursor up to the new position. If I press enter, I first check that there are characters that have been typed in. 
If so, put in a zero. At this point I should have a number in the array. I'm going to manually convert this string into a number. So I have a variable, column weight, and I have a converted number. So first of all I have a look at the characters typed variable. This just sets the column weight to 1, 10 or 100 depending on how many characters that I have typed in. This line converts the ASCII symbol into a number. So if I press 0 this character is actually a 48. So if I subtract 48 from it I get a 0. If I press a 9 this would actually internally be 57. So 57 minus 48 is 9. So that bit converts the ASCII character into a number from 0 to 9. I multiply that by column weight. So for example if it was I typed in 98 first iteration I would get 9 times 10 and add that to converted number. The next iteration is 8 times 1 and add that to the converted number. This line divides column weight by 10 so it should go from 100 to 10 to 1. So I can actually type in a number greater than 100%. If I do, if I typed in say 500, I'll only get 100. This constraint command makes sure that converted number goes from 0 to 100. So at this point, current output percent is a number from 0 to 100. So now I can safely reset the variables characters typed to 0. And I place a 0 at the start of typed input. I'm keeping the string as a normal C++ string terminated by 0 just in case I change the program at a later date. The analog write command expects a number from 0 to 255. So this map function maps numbers 0 to 100 to 0 to 255 and then I update the display. So if I press a key that isn't delete or enter I first check the range to see if it's from 0 to 9 and that I've typed in less than 3 characters. If so I print that character, I place it in the array and increase characters typed by 1. update display function. I clear the LCD screen, type some text on the top line, I move the cursor to the next line and display the current output. Then I set the cursor to column 11. So when I type in characters this will be the starting position. Here is a modified circuit which uses a 12 volt fan. I have done a resistance test on the fan and selected an appropriate transistor which can handle the surge current from the fan when it turns on. The Arduino Uno board and fan are both connected to a 12 volt supply. The LCD and keyboard are omitted from this diagram but they are powered from the Arduino Uno board of its 5 volt regulator. I am using a transistor because I cannot power this fan from the board or from an output pin as it takes too much current. I am also not using a field effect transistor as the supply is 12 volts and the Arduino Uno can only give a maximum output voltage of 5 volts which means a FET might not switch on fully in this particular circuit. An NPN transistor will amplify the current and fully switch on or off. As a fan is also an inductor and resistor, I am using a diode and capacitor as before. I can now control the speed of the motor. If I typed in 0, the transistor would not turn on. 100% would give a steady 5 volts at pin 10 and the motor would run at full speed. If I typed in 50, the signal at pin 10 would switch on and off equally at around 490Hz. 25% would mean that the pin switches on for a quarter of the time and off for three quarters. The frequency at which it does this will always be approximately 490Hz. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for listening.